Do you see how I said it's I'm gonna dead. put this dog to sleep? And then you, <laughs> and then and you, you killed, killed it. it. <laughs> that is dead. Oh man. And that's recorded. I'm gonna send that to the police. <clears throat> My name is Bradley Jones. I'm Andrew Moldenhauer. And I'm Andy Hubert. And this is not a movie review podcast, but a podcast where we try to recall the events of a film that we haven't seen in a very, very long time. This is what we remember about Beethoven. Were there two or three bad guys in Home Alone? And who was that forgetful fish in Finding Nemo? Join us as we're watching films. See what we remember and what memories we kill. Let's start the show. Here we go. This is what we remember. I have very little memory of what happens in this movie. So, uh, so Other than there's a giant dog. Yeah so, yeah, so would you say that for the last time you saw it was like way back when you were a kid? Or I saw this like, in the theaters when it first came out. In the theaters, okay. And that was the last time I... You saw this it. in theaters? Yes. Wow. Yes. I, wow, I don't think, I, don't think I did. Huge. I, d- I definitely did not. I probably have seen this 15 years ago, I'm guessing. Yeah. Uh, the year it came out, I saw. Yeah, mine. I was. It's probably like ten years for me. We had this on VHS, and it was like one of the most watched movies in my house growing up. I think we watched okay. this all the time. I I actually think that this is a solid movie. Like I remember it being really yeah. good. Okay. In my opinion, it was definitely one of the first '90s dog films that came out. Yeah. So that had it going for it, like beat to the punch, uh, Homeward Bound, and Air Bud, and. Beat all those movies to the punch of like yeah it probably came out around the same time as Homeward Bound yeah early nineties I'd say like but so this movie is about a Saint Bernard correct it is <laughs> I've got that far is is the dad in this movie Charles Grodin or Dabney Coleman I think Charles can, Grodin. can you say who Charles Grodin <laughs> might have also been in Charles Grodin was also in Clifford. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's Charles Grodin for sure. And he knows his Clifford. All right. I, uh, I, I, he's not in very many movies. No. Over, no. he's in, um, he weird. was in a lot of kids He's in movies. a Richard Pryor yeah. movie. I feel weird watching him. I feel like he's like, like a Brewster's, discount, uh, I think Steve he's in, Martin. Almost. I'm sure he has like a hundred like, film credits. Brewster's Brewster's probably, probably, yeah. It's probably a bunch of movies, like kids movies like this, kind of yeah. like quick and dirty. Yeah. He's probably, he's probably in Dunstan Checks In. <laughs> <laughs> it's possible. Yeah, I, I do know recently that he doesn't really like acting just because he doesn't want to leave New Jersey. So if any, like, I know he's in the last season of Louis that was out. He played Louis's um, doctor. And Louis, like, made special mm. trips to, like, go film with him. Yeah. Just, he just doesn't want to leave his town. So the movie is about a family. Correct. There's, it, uh, there's a little kid, mm-hmm. a mom... An older brother and a older it's, it's sister? It's like a Mrs. Doubtfire setup. It, right. it, yeah, same it's setup exactly as Mrs. Same. Doubtfire. There's an older sister, yep. a middle, middle son, yep. and a younger daughter. Yes. Okay. And uh, the, older daughter, the older daughter's name is Rice. Yeah. Her yep. name is actually it Rice. Is Rice. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Not it's, not, it's, not, it's not Reese. They were really any... hungry when she was born. And... <laughs> it's the first thing they saw. Had Chinese food that I remember, and and this is this is not gonna be good, but <laughs> I totally had a crush on her when I saw this movie when I was like You're not a little alone. when no. I was not a little alone. kid. D- there was no girl in a '90s kids movie I didn't have a crush. That's on. true. Yeah, or that's a, that's a show. fact. That's yeah. just a straight fact. But she she's like 14 <laughs> or 15 in this movie or something like that. Yeah, I just remember she's has blonde hair and like probably braces or something. I but think you're right about that. Yeah. I think she does have braces. And the the little boy is also like kind of blonde. He has like really He's a like kind of yeah. yeah nerdy like yeah. big glasses, Very big Coke bottle glasses. Yeah, yeah. And a then, real Jonathan yeah. Lipnicki. <laughs> type, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. Very, very much so. He's probably the first of the. What's the name of Jonathan again? Lipnicki? <laughs> <laughs> He's the first Lipnicki. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And then, so how quick do they does this family get this dog or want a dog? Okay, or... cause I can't remember this because I think the movie starts where they already have the dog. There's, there's no, no way. way. <laughs> they have, there's no movie there's that starts no like that. Way that that's how this starts. Yeah. It has to be like I I feel I remember a scene where like the dad comes home and as a re- recurring theme throughout the film, there's like a mess and. He mm-hmm. finally, he like, opens the door, and it's oh. all three of them, and the littlest girl has has the puppy of Beethoven in her lap, and she's like, can we keep him? 
And I don't know where they got the dog, though. When does that I, happen? Okay. The beginning of the film? I think this plays into the villain element. That, yeah, I was so, trying to remember that, too. Is there a jewel thief or, like, a bank robber in this okay. film? Okay, I couldn't <laughs> track it down completely, but there are two villains in this movie. Or maybe he's just the evil dog catcher. There, yeah, that's probably right. <laughs> <Maybe>. Stanley Tucci. <laughs> what? <laughs> Stanley Tucci. Okay. Is he the evil vet guy. Mm-hmm. And then the other guy, I can't remember his name. Is he evil vet? I think there's but a. Yeah. I there's think like they work for a vet. Vet guy. They were, yes. What's their and, big yeah, There's plan. a vet guy and two henchmen. Listen, that he's got. Brad, I literally wrote down. I don't know what their end game is. Are they trying? It's like I feel like. To, yeah, is, is the Saint Bernard worth a lot of money? Maybe they find uh, Are they trying to kidnap it, it back? Maybe. Yeah, yeah. I think. I think maybe that somehow his like uh, collar has got a diamond in it or something. Or, oh. And they're like, oh, we maybe, accidentally put the. Or maybe like they, they have the dog like, part dog catcher, part diamond <laughs> thief. Uh, maybe they work out of like a uh, they work out of like a dog <laughs> shelter, and he's like the, yeah, the, I think they do. a dog shelter and the two henchmen guys, and maybe the dog like eats something valuable that they stole or something. That sounds good. But I feel like that's way... It would just poop it out. Yeah, there's no way that well, that's... But, they, the but the dog movie, gets though. away before it gets to poop it out. So does Beethoven escape from an animal shelter in this I I think movie? maybe. I think so. I think they find him Yeah, because I think the little okay. girl is like, can we keep him? Like, I think there is probably a scene yeah. like that. So I'm going to retract that. I don't think they start with having the dog in the first <laughs> yeah. place. But there has to be a time lapse, because he gets very big very Yeah, there, there, there's a I, montage. I feel like there's a lot of montages in the beginning. <laughs> I'm so I'm going to be so montaged after we watch there this There is a montage that I remember of all, all right. of them feeding the dog. It, with ever, the growing bags she, of yeah. food. Uh, what's the guy's, what's the, the main actor's name? Charles Grodin. Charles Grodin yeah. comes home with a lot of food, yep. and he keeps seeing him come home with food, Pour it into this bowl. Yeah, the bowl gets bigger. And yep. The food gets bigger. The dog gets older. He's getting like human sized bags of dog food. And this is before yeah. Costco existed. This I'm just is... going to say there's two montages in this film. Two? And, and that, just just low ball it. You just okay. put, uh, put it in a How many do you think? Yeah, because we, we I'm doing pretty this. This sure like this is theme. like a 90 minute. I went. Movie. I went low last time. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the Mrs. Doubtfire level and go four montages. There were four in that movie. Yeah. I'm gonna say I'm gonna cut. It was the like four and I'm gonna say three. All right, that's three montages. I like that. Okay. I'd love to see. So now that they have this dog, the one thing that I remember is Charles Grodin does not like this and dog. He doesn't like no. anything in this movie. There's the There's... one scene where he opens the door after uh, oh, Beethoven got man. a bath or something, or he's it, just, no, oh it, no, he's so it, gross it, and it muddy. It rained outside. It rained, and, and he shakes off in slow yeah, motion. That's, that is the classic. That, I'm, I'm, that is like that's in the trailer. trailer. I was going to say, it's yes. in the trailer, yeah. <laughs> no, that's, and because there's like the, the whole progression where like he opens the door sl- and like from the outside, so you're watching inside the house, he opens it, and you can see it's all muddy outside, and there's like muddy tracks into the house. Like, so he saw it going in. And he was like, "Oh no, yes. this dog didn't." So I don't know if this and... happens, but I'm gonna guess that Charles Grodin works for some sort of business company. He works yes. for an air freshener company. An air freshener company. Ooh, and some, I like that. And somehow, like Beethoven eats like secret plans. Like a new air freshener or some sort of like thing no, that he was that, trying to there do. There is a subplot involving the air freshener. Uh, business, mm-hmm. um, and I remember he uh, he works out of like a brick building covered in ivy and it has a giant nose on it, and like his yeah he well, sells air, he makes and sells air fresheners, but there and there is a whole plot where he's trying to like sell this new air freshener. What does it um, smell? What's the smell? <laughs> I think it's bacon. Ooh, Ooh. I want to like have that ahead now? of its time. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to say it's a bacon air freshener. I feel like that would be something that would sell today, but oh, not, absolutely. maybe not it's, in nineteen ninety. It's bacon crazy right now, but. Yeah, he, and he he invites over like these two executives from I guess the biggest pet store chain or something. Do you know who the male executive is? No, no, David Duchovny. Really? <laughs> yeah, oh, he has right. a cameo. He does. I forgot. He has a cameo in this movie. I wanted to go back and say about the air fresher looks like bacon. Yes, like strips it does. Of bacon. It okay. does look like strips of bacon. Okay. So maybe Beethoven eats it because he thinks it's bacon strips, <laughs> <laughs> and that's where bacon strips came from. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the, well, so that's a big plot point where he's really nervous about like this great meeting he needs with these people, so they buy all his air fresheners, and Beethoven ruins the meeting. Oh yeah, he has to. That's gotta happen. Uh, but yeah, he Beethoven ruins the meeting by yeah, like, wrapping so them up in a table or something. Th- what? No, no, so they're How's outside. They're, they're outside, outside on, a on a patio table, mm-hmm. as and all business meetings are. There's a thing where, and this is just like loosely in my imagination, but. I think what happens is Beethoven comes over, 
and the and David Duchovny is like petting the dog, and then he's like, "Oh, I love these like stupid mutts. They're yeah, so dumb." You're right. He's a jerk in this movie. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. He's oh, like, bummer. he's like, I bet he's you're a little Rossman. stupid doggy, you little dummy doggy, and like makes yeah, fun I of him. I think they're both like that. And Beethoven, no, I, bet, is, I bet Charles Grodin defends him at that point. He'd be like, "Hey, I'm going to make fun you're right. of the dog." I think he's like, he's like, "You don't hey, make fun like, of the dog. I do." Yeah, let's let's tone it back here. And I can, Beethoven I can say is those smart things, enough but... to know that he's being undermined <laughs> by David Duchovny. <laughs> I think what he does is he takes a uh, he takes like um, oh like a hose with uh, it's like I don't know if it's his leash, it. but yeah, or it's a hose or something. But he like and he ends up walking around the table, and they think he's just coming around to get pets and stuff. But he's like. Wrapping their so chairs. So it's a hyper intelligent dog. Yes, Beethoven is one hundred percent sentient. He knows that he's knows doing exactly himself. what's happening. He doesn't like accidentally wrap around his leg. He grabs it, and but then puts he it takes around. off. Oh, it is his leash. Okay, it is his leash. Okay, so maybe he's. This he, is all coming back to me. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> maybe unbeknownst to Beethoven, he's doing this. I'm not gonna. He's, <laughs> it's not giving that much credit. You're like, no. Yeah. The, the the way the scene plays out is that they're doing this this deal like what I don't know what the deal is about it's, the, really? it's for yeah Take for them to carry his air freshener in their stores so Beethoven has a really long leash and he keeps wandering around the table yes. slowly yes. wrapping them up and they don't know it and then David Duchovny makes fun of him and he picks up a ball and he's like fetch and he throws it yeah you're and right and then Beethoven runs for it mm. but he's so fast that he takes the table the yep. chair <laughs> David Duchovny his the, his business partner yep. and just takes them with All him is there a waiter who like has a plate of food or something or <laughs> no, glasses that gets thrown up in the yeah. air but they end up in the pool <laughs> they end up in the pool in the backyard yeah they're just in like the backyard oh, of, of the main of guy's house Charles Grodin's house yeah. But that's in then, so then he's like, wait over! Yeah. <laughs> um, so what happened, what I think happens next is... They probably try to get rid of the dog. Charles Grodin says, we have to get rid of the dog. We have to get rid of this dog. He's terrorizing our house. He just ruined this big deal. Mm -hmm. There's a big scene where he, it's like Charles Grodin versus... Bo Bonnie family. Hunt and, is it and the Bonnie kids. Hunt? It I think it's like Bonnie. It, it seems that like it's right. totally Bonnie Hunt. That sounds right. Or to Bonnie me. Hunt look alike. So kind of Bonnie Hunt. <laughs> they um they're all against him taking the dog away, but he's like, I'm I'm just gonna I do gotta it. Gotta do it. Gotta I don't do care. It. And I think what he does is he takes it to the pound where the Stanley evil Tucci dog and yeah, the other guy okay. work. And I maybe, maybe this. this is the first time they see the dog since it's stolen the jewels. I wonder if they're, if they're even in the beginning or if this is where whatever they need the dog for happens. Yeah, maybe. Well, I don't know. Like it would be good to introduce them in the beginning. Like I think in terms of like story writing, you kind of mm -hmm. want to know who the villain is. Like it could right be. from the get get go. Yeah. But um, like, I don't know. It's possible <laughs> the get go. <laughs> It's possible that uh, this is where we first kind of meet the villains. Yeah. Now that he's in this, in this, um... And I bet Charles Grodin gets, like, a weird vibe from the villains, and he's like, maybe I didn't want to give Beethoven I, no, away, I think it's, and he, he has gives a change it away, of heart. And comes home, and the family, and, like, he... Him is probably family is really upset with the him. The family is depressed for forever, and finally he's so moved by how sad, like, the little girl, the littlest girl is... Um, that he's like, fine, we'll get the dog. He doesn't like pick up one of Beethoven's toys and like reminisce about how he used to have good times <laughs> like, with it. <laughs> I liked the dog too. I made a mistake. That doesn't. He doesn't have that. I, no, I think he does. He like that. like he kind of like the it. third act. He finally has a like. This is our dog. Yeah, like, like, he's he does ours. a member moment, of our family. He he's does just have not a dog. With the David Duchovny thing, where you're right. I think he's like, hey, like that's my dog. Be nice. I don't know. If, I don't he know if he's there yet. Okay. I, f I feel like he doesn't get there until like the third like the third act okay. happens where that he's, he be. finds out that something's going on where these guys are like Stanley Tucci and whoever the other guy they they have these like needles that they're injecting yeah, something they're doing into some the sort dog. Of experimentation. Oh. There's wait, some what? big experiment thing that's going on yeah. with all these dogs. Cuz that plays a big part in the very last bit of the film when they like the the so they're resolution. Using test animals for Yeah, yeah they're like testing something. I think mm. you're right, but but it, like definitely Stanley yeah. Tucci and the other guy are like idiot uh, henchmen yes. for this vet or something. Yeah, like this evil vet guy who's like experimenting on all these shelter animals. Yeah, okay. so maybe he has to test a formula before he can sell it to like a drug company. Yeah, but maybe. he's like testing like it that. illegally yeah. or something. Um, but in between, there's like the whole I don't know. This isn't really a montage, but like part of the meat of the movie is Beethoven. Like individually, again, Mrs. Doubtfire esque, but instead of Robin <laughs> Williams, it's a Saint Bernard. Mm -hmm. um, helps each of the kids with a problem. Okay. So like yep. with with Rice, she like the dog like comes to her school and like barks. She's like, 
bad guy, Beto, what are you doing here? And then the hot guy's like, hey, Russ, I see you got yeah, a dog. Yeah, you got a nice dog. Check totally. out that dog, brace face. And <laughs> it's, so she's like, oh, Beethoven got me a boyfriend. Yeah, that does happen for sure. So she hot, like gets a date with like the cool kid. Yeah. So let's go through it. What happens to the middle child? He's getting boy. bullied. Is he? Because he's a big fat nerd, uh-huh. and he's well, getting bullied yeah. by like <laughs> geez, just lay it on thick like that. Are you one Look, of the bullies in the film? Did you play one of nerds? Nerds people? deserve it. Okay. He <laughs> 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 got bullied as a kid. But, uh, so he's getting bullied he, by some. He gets kid bullied and... by like these three guys at school, and like they're they mess with them on like when he's coming home. And Beethoven mauls them. Mauls them? Oh, no! No, no. Beethoven just barks at them. Beethoven barks at them and, like, scares them away. Yeah. Yeah. Because this dog is humongous at this point. It's a giant dog. It's a huge dog. dog. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That thing's, like... It seems as big as Charles Grodin. Really big. Yeah. Yeah. My cousin had a St. Bernard, and she, like, she bred him. And it would sit on the couch like a person would sit on a couch. (laughs) It was the weirdest thing. I, its butt would be on the couch and probably the paws like on the ground. ground. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that man. happened, and it was so weird. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> well, because it's got to be as big as at least the wife, because there's a there's a scene where uh, Charles Grodin's like in bed in the morning or something, and like. Beethoven starts licking his ear, and he's like, "Oh yeah, baby, I Ooh. like that." And then she like she comes out of the bathroom next to him, and is like, "Who are you talking to?" And he turns around and sees Beethoven. And he's like, "Beethoven." <laughs> okay, okay. How many how many like crash zoom like close ups of Charles Grodin do you think are in this movie? There are a lot of close ups. <laughs> There's a lot of crash zooms. I think, okay, yeah. but like, but like, comical but, close-ups. Yeah. yeah, but his his face probably sells the movie mm-hmm. oh, so yeah. well. Like, he's very disappointed with everything happening in the movie. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, not a happy guy. No, so. so the third, the the little girl, I remember this. That's the serious one. Yeah, yeah, this one is like awful. So this is all before they get rid of Beethoven. Yes. They're. The three kids are over at a nanny's house, mm-hmm. or they're at their house and they have a nanny there. Yeah, one of those. And the little girl... I think, um, no, it's not their house, because Beethoven's at their house. And yeah. Beethoven breaks out the, the they're at, like, the they're at the house. They're at the next door neighbor's house. Yeah. So I remember, it's, the scene starts, like, the girl's, like, playing... The, the old lady's playing piano. And making them listen to it. Making bored. them listen to, like, really, like, out-of-tune music. It's, like, really bad. And she's, she's, thinking, she's like, just, like, wandering... She's song to them, like, the... Kitchen, kitchen, here. Yes, that is it. She's playing that to like these kids, and it's really weird. (laughs) And so the little girl's outside because she can't take take that crap, and she's playing with a ball by a pool. By a pool, the ball falls in the pool, and she's she's reaching to try and get it, and she falls in the pool. And I bet she can't swim. She can't swim at all. Swim. Mm -hmm. She almost drowns, and the she's yelling for help in between drowning, and like she's. The lady's playing the yeah, piano. The piano lady's no just jamming away inside so they can't hear her yelling for help. And so Beethoven hears her next door and breaks out of breaks probably like a leash kennel or, or a yeah. leash or something and, and jumps the fence and gets her out of there, rescues her right. yeah. from dying. Yep. And, and I remember the the next door neighbor lady yes. starts to yell at her. Yeah, she starts like, you blaming the little careful, girl. Right? Yeah. And, and that's when, when Rice, like, I think Rice comes in and she's just like... Like, I don't like, know what she says. You're supposed to be watching yeah, us. Yeah, like, you're yeah. supposed to be watching us, and you're not, and whatever. So there has to be a scenario where Charles Grodin thinks that Beethoven, like, intentionally, like, broke something in the house. I think they, and someone that, accuses Beethoven of biting them. And it, I think it's the evil vet guy. It is the evil vet guy, yeah. He says, like, he's a vicious dog, and, like, that you have to get rid of him, or we'll, like, sue you or something. Oh, he, I don't know no. why he comes over, but he comes over to, um... To see Beethoven, mm-hmm. and what he does is he fakes getting bitten. Yeah. He has like fake blood. Yes, I remember that. Yeah, I remember and him he, putting he, on like, fake blood. He rips his shirt a little bit and he puts blood and all then he over hits, there. Hits like Beethoven's snout a little bit. Right. Yeah, he hits him so. a little bit and then he's and then uh, and then he's like, "Ow, ow, ow! Your, your dog just bit me." Yeah, and, and then everyone defends Beethoven like he would never. The do kids that. all he yeah. does bad things, yeah. but he would never bite somebody. Right? Yeah, the so kids. I think the kids are like that. And but they the say parents that are kind of like, uh, I don't yeah, know. yeah, the kids are like if even if he did, it's clearly because the guy did something. Like the kids say that they're like he now, must have done something too big. Now that I'm thinking about it, the the vet's kind of like this long haired like hippie guy, hmm. I, I, not important at all. Yeah, but like that's that's kind of what okay. I remember. And so that's when Charles Grodin's like. Okay, we have to get rid of Beethoven because he's biting people. Bummer. He's yeah. a vicious, Man. vicious St. But I don't know why they want Beethoven. 
that's that's a big. He's got to have the formula inside of him, and they want to like. Or maybe like or... maybe he was at the rescue before, and they injected a bunch of animals, and he was like the success. So they need Beethoven. Yeah, they definitely need him for something. They need Beethoven specifically for something. Mm-hmm. Um, Who knows what though? Yeah, and yeah, and so they he takes or he lets I don't know if he lets that guy take Beethoven or he takes him to. The that, himself. The rescue or the yeah, shelter. I, I, I'm pretty power. sure Charles Grodin has yeah. to take him to. That seems like a big moment in the film where yeah. Charles Grodin like feels bad for having to do this. Right. Yeah, he had. He's the one who has to take Beethoven right. to the kennel or whatever mm-hmm. or um, shelter or whatever it is. And then now, do they go just to get Beethoven back, or do they start to wonder if something's wrong? I bet they get led on to there's something isn't quite what it's supposed to be. Or something's up with these evil, like maybe they they see the guy who got bit maybe. later, and it's like, oh, he doesn't have the bite. Yes, mark. I think that's exactly right. Like they they meet, him, they run into him later, and yeah, he doesn't have like a bandage on or something, right. or like they there grab has to his be arm some sort of yeah. thing that leads them to believe. They realize that he faked it. He was up to no good. Yes, like we didn't okay, need that, to get, we didn't yeah. need to get rid of Beethoven. This guy tricked us. That makes sense. And they try to get him back, but it's probably like too late, or Beethoven's already like in a car, like escaping and they have to chase after beethoven yeah so i i'm very fuzzy on like what happens <laughs> i don't know if it ends in like a forest or like there's a lot of trees in i remember that i remember in the shelter they're like at the shelter at where the all shelter. these other dogs are they're at the shelter so i don't do we want to just jump to the ending part? unless you got some more in you i don't, I don't, I don't know if I like we, there's not much much in between does except probably some the, montages of enjoying beethoven. anything happen with the mom in this movie we didn't I touch don't, on her at all. Yeah, I don't exactly Beethoven know Beethoven probably helps her, her make is. some food or something. <laughs> like, Beethoven's up there with a rolling pin, like... <laughs> Licks dishes clean. I'd love, to, I'd love to see just, like, two dog paws. I do like, remember there camera. is, like, a... There's all, all sorts of Beethoven, yeah, making... Uh, Groden mad where like he does the bed scene <laughs> sure. both bed scenes where he licks his ear and then the second one where he shakes off all the mud and slobber they make a big point of it's water on them and then there's like big slobber things of slobber like yeah. that oh yeah and slobbering all over the place is like the biggest theme in this movie uh, so but there's also he ruins like a Thanksgiving <clears throat> dinner or something uh, they have all the food out and like Beethoven gets up on and starts eating the turkey yeah so is Beethoven actively being disruptive or is it just like well, I, I don't know better because I'm a dumb dog Beethoven is a is a sentient dog he knows what he's doing is what uh, he's telling I don't know I think like he's, he, going he's out just of being way. a dog he's just being a dog I mean <laughs> he's no Air Bud <laughs> yeah because Air Bud could play he, basketball yeah he's definitely not a smart dog he's just a dog basically yeah I mean, he he knows, like, who his owner is. Big, lovable, slobbery dog. Yeah. And so, but there are a bunch of scenes that make Groden upset. So, yeah, he's more willing to believe that the dog is bad. Yeah. I don't don't really know how he comes back around to wanting to rescue Beethoven. But I think probably the way that... I think there's a scene where he sees... I think he's the one that discovers the guy doesn't have the bite mark on his arm. Yeah, and I think oh. there's a scene where he or... sees, like, the emotional, like, reaction. Yeah, like, that could be too. I think yeah. the family is, like, sitting down watching TV. No one's saying a word. No one looks happy. Mm, and, yeah, they're all mad at him. And and sure. he eventually says, like, all right, let's go get him back or yeah. something like that. Mm-hmm. And then I don't know what happens exactly. Well, they have to get Beethoven back at some point, and the villains have to be trying to get Beethoven somewhere, I think. Yeah, so they go to... I think there's there's like a chase scene. There's a little bit of a chase, and they're at the shelter, and there's like a little bit of a fight scene, too, between like the dad and like one of the henchmen or the vet guy or something. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I distinctly remember a scene where, like, the oh, the parents went into the shelter but left the kids in the car... And the kids end up, like, driving the car through the garage door of the shelter <laughs> and, like, running yes. over the two henchmen guys. Whoa. But I think... And... Yeah, the the son does that. Yes, you're right. Yeah. The son... And, and I think there's... There's obviously... I think the dad is, like, finally, like, being a man or something like that. Like, that Some doesn't happen throughout the Beethoven, whole movie. Yeah. He finally mm-hmm. is, like in a physical fight with this vet guy and he punches him and knocks him out and like mm. the the guys the the son is like way to go dad like right. wow yeah. that's awesome he's willing to fight for his dog at this point in the film and everyone's yeah. on his and back. I, I'm the mom sure... probably does that too maybe like slaps a guy or maybe, or yeah, maybe, it's, maybe it's mom that does that it might be. Like, go, mom. go mom yeah. yeah that sounds better it's like that's rookie of the year <laughs> that definitely sounds better yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's that's another very... big 90s theme is women hitting people 
<laughs> standing up for yeah. themselves. It should happen more often. Yeah. I, I'm all for it. <laughs> there is a scene where, um, in the ending, where they have all these needles set up to give yes. to these dogs. And they're all different colors of they're stuff all di- in them. Yes. What do they do? And there's like 50 of them. Yeah. What do the needles they do? I don't know if they explain I don't that. know. I thought, I'm really excited they to have, watch it and find out if they explain, explain what this is what they do. It's kind but of... what happens is, I think Stanley Tucci is the guy. He's pushed up against the corner... And all these dogs hit these needles, and they go flying at him. <laughs> and they, they stick them like a target. Like, oh, geez. All of them hit all into them. him. It sounds horrific. And, and like, he yeah, just he, passes out. I was out. like, he's got to be dead. Like that's, so, that's It was not good for him to be injected with all of those things. He gets injected with all of them. And I remember as a kid being horrified at that scene because I hated needles. Oh, God. And he gets stabbed with like 50 of them. Yeah, if you're needle phobic, then this is, oh, that's my pretty God. bad. I never really minded needles as a kid. I got shots and didn't even... Oh. I, I was not a shot. Okay. I, get, I, I still get it. blood like three every three months, and needles just don't. don't if care you ever it. want to hear a good story, I'll tell you my giving blood story. <laughs> giving <laughs> needle blood it involves story. me. <laughs> it, it does involve Andy, where I got through the process of giving blood, and then freaked out when I saw Andy pass out, and I. Yeah. I literally like broke down almost in tears. I was like, I want to give blood. That's right. Don't you had your, you had your paperwork in. and you were already. I was, I was the next person to go and yes. I was just like, nope, I'm not doing it. Sorry. Bye. And I yeah. like, I got out of there. We had the same experience. We talked about this, that I was with somebody who also passed out, but it is like after the fact that we had both given blood and she just passed out. Yeah. yeah so I did it was just like scary. a thing that happened. I did indeed pay. Yeah. Me and uh, Chris, one of our other friends passed out at this, like at the same table. Like, yeah. we had given blood. I remember Andy was sitting Maybe behind me waiting for Doing his something chance. wrong at that place. And, uh, like, Honestly, well, I was sitting at your table probably because I was avoiding Well, the best, thing was, <laughs> yeah, the best thing was it was me and Chris in there, and both our girlfriends were sitting there with us, and me and Chris passed out, and they didn't, and we never heard the end of it. Okay. <laughs> but, yeah, that, and that, yeah, Andy describes it as, like, a movie scene where he, like, stood up and was like, nope, and just, like, tore his paper over and like, got out of there. I, I don't know. Like, it just... Very cinematic. <laughs> I, I kind of don't like know what the specifics were, but I just I got out. of I mean, there right I haven't away. given blood since. <laughs> I passed yeah. out the one time, and I was like, Once I don't is know enough. if I can do it. They uh, bother me all the time with emails and phone calls <laughs> about wanting my blood. Yeah, oh man, the well, the my blood is, is so good. The reason, the only reason I gave blood was to find out my blood type. And then when they sent me the little Red Cross card, my parents thought it was this junk mail from Red Cross and chucked it. And I never saw it. I still oh, to this no. day. If it was recently, don't know my it'll blood be type. online. It's not. It was. It. This was from 2004, Four, 2005. Five. Yeah. That we did See, this. See, I, I did the finger prick and uh, they tested my blood or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then I didn't get to the point where I gave blood. So they were like, we're not going to tell you what your blood type yeah. is. Oh, <laughs> they hid it from you? Well, I'm being positive if it never comes up. Yeah, if I ever need a blood transfusion. To this day, I still don't know my blood type, yeah. but I feel like this is not a good thing. I no, feel like should, I should know this. You should well, know Well, they could, I mean, if you had some accident, they would be able they to test it. They can test it quick. It. And there, yeah. there yeah. is at-home tests that you can give. You can well, get and like at the hospital, they give they just give you like, oh, negative blood until they find out what your blood type is or whatever. Yeah. Like, universal blood. But yeah. point being, Stanley Tucci got poked with it's all these needles. Full of needles. Oh, yes. Man. And we have no idea what these needles do. No, they're full of mystery stuff. And he's out. He's out. Like... Like he doesn't come back in yeah. terms of like I don't I don't think he comes back as like a villain. Like All right. this is his like, my wild closing. guess of what the needles do is they make they improve intelligence. That's my you guess. Think so? you think it's like a, <laughs> okay. like, they like Beethoven's an experimental dog. Experimental dog for making people smarter or making things smarter. Hmm. What is your wild guess of what the needles do? I mean, I, I would imagine that it's probably some vaccine to get rid of something like. The vet is that probably seem like a bad guy thing. No, no, to no, do, no, no, no. Wait, wait. So his intentions are good. He's trying to come up with a vaccine to get rid of like rabies or something like that. But he's not going about it in the correct way. He's doing like he's illegal testing. testing on dogs. Okay. And I don't. I don't really know why he needs Beethoven in particular, but I think he's doing some type of illegal testing. Look, but he's, everyone he's knows doing it in order that Saint for number the one best dog. personal gain. Number two, some type of credibility. Yeah. Andy Hubert, what do you think? I, I'm in, the, in, the, I'm, in, in between. I'm like, I think he's testing on these animals, but I feel like it's something not good. Like, it's some sort of, like, maybe a steroid or some sort of weird thing that is clearly something he shouldn't be testing on anyone. Yeah. And he's yeah, using yeah. these animals as, like, test subjects. And it's, like, I re- in my head, I'm remembering him as a kid, like, him being, like, cacklingly evil where he's, like, in, a, in like, the shelf, like, wah ha like, lightning storms outside to... I can't so he's like a bad it. doctor Frankenstein. But this could just be me as a kid being like, "That's a bad guy," and like associating <laughs> all this with him. But the, yeah, the most vivid thing for me is when he gets like just covered in needles, and I was mm-hmm. like, 
so that drove me. Crazy. At the end of these movies, go. I bet they get arrested. The bad guys at some point. Definitely yeah. the cops ba- show up at the end. Oh, you just clued me in uh, <laughs> to save the day. I think what happens is, yeah, they, they they do get arrested. News reporters show up, and the dad gets uh, interviewed for the news. I remember them taking the needle guy away in a gurney, and he's like awake, but he still has all those needles in his yeah. chest. And and so like dad is on. Well, the whole family now is like on the news, and mm-hmm. I think the closing. Like, the last scene that you see is them watching this news program as a family with Beethoven there. Yeah, and it closes out with one of those, like, cheesy news lines where they're like, Yeah. This family loves their dog. I was going to say that Beethoven gets taken away from them again. But, like, oh, we have to take the dog to do more testing. And they're like, no, it's our dog. And then Beethoven shows up again at the end to, like, make everything better again. I don't know why I think that. I don't think I don't that know. probably doesn't happen, but that's how I would write the film. <laughs> or there's another like, oh, everyone's really sad again. But it's like a fake wait. ending, and then the fake ending, ending, Beethoven shows up again at the end to make everything right. Yeah, I, I don't think it's that like thought out. It's just like a a very like... maybe they just take Beethoven in for questioning because <laughs> he, he did all this. Like, but but I do think like, this is like dog. another moment where he's like, this is our dog. Like he he yeah he accepts that like. I think you're right. You know, There's like, yeah, the this scene with the dog dad with makes the dog, their family whole. And the little girl's like, see, dad, you do love Beethoven. And he like grudgingly is like. Rrr. I can imagine, though, there being like a little like sting on the end of the film where like Beethoven does something and wrecks something and he does like another crash zoom like. <laughs> oh, Beethoven! Right end, I bet that I would see that being the last line is, yeah, there's a crash. I'm and pretty sure. Fade to be. black with a Beethoven and scream. Or maybe this is where the reveal is Beethoven's a girl and then has puppies. Or is that, is that, is that, is that, oh, oh, that happened in the movie? Oh my god! That could be real. <laughs> does that happen? Because that is Beethoven's second. Yeah. Beethoven has puppies. Has, has a litter. Yeah. So maybe there's like a or or there's a lady Saint Bernard with Beethoven at the end of the film, and then that has puppies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's like a, oh my gosh, puppies! I can yeah. <laughs> And then, okay. Maybe then he says, and then Beethoven. Charles Groen's like, "Oh, and that again, Beethoven, <laughs> you got pregnant." <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh man. All right. So, is there anything else you can remember in this film? I think that that's. I, I, all. I'm more. I'm very curious to know answers to all sorts of questions. This is going to be an interesting. I'm going to be watch. excited when I see the David Duchovny cameo. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I I was hesitant to bring this up because I don't know if you know this movie, but. Have you seen the movie The Imposters that also has Stanley Tucci? I don't know. I don't think I have. I don't recognize the name. So, okay. I was hoping you would. No. But the, <laughs> not sure. the second guy that's in The Imposters with Stanley Tucci is also in Beethoven as the second so guy. Did Stanley Tucci make sure that he got hired in with the other guy? Like, he was like, we're a team. I, I don't know, but they're both in Beethoven, and then they're also both in the movie <laughs> The Imposters, which came out, I think, five years from each other, okay. like apart from each other. Does Stanley Tucci have hair? He does Beethoven. No. Has he, he ever he had has, hair? He, he <laughs> has the Stanley Tucci, like, side yeah, hair. Side yeah, side hair, yep. The skull, like, the skullet? Is that what it's yeah. called? <laughs> skullet. <laughs> that's exactly what yeah, he has, yeah. yeah. That's, how, yeah I, that's how I remember it. Yeah, and I know that we're not going to go into Beethoven's second, probably for a long time, if ever. I don't know if I could even recall okay, the first scene. This is something, I wasn't sure if I'm mixing up this movie with <laughs> another Beethoven, but there's like, they tie Beethoven to a pillar of like a, a porch that's like on a, like way up on the second story of a house. What? Yeah, I, I, this probably is Beethoven too. So they like they bring Beethoven to a party at this really fancy mansion and yep, tie yep, her yep, up yep, to yep. a balcony post. Beethoven, and Beethoven rips second. it out and the whole balcony collapses. Yes, oh, man. So and Beethoven's <laughs> second, I believe, came out maybe like two years later. Okay, it um it takes place during a family vacation. Same family, obviously. Yeah. Um, but also same villains. Really? Stanley Tucci, <laughs> Stanley Tucci, and the other guy make a They're comeback How they with a no, with a lady. Um, I don't remember. Her face looks familiar, okay. but I don't remember who she is. These lax child or animal abuse laws like lets them out of like animal jail in but ten there, seconds. Is the plot the same? Where Beethoven has the there, juice inside of him that they need? <laughs> is that <laughs> a thing? The, the virus <laughs> juice. I don't know. I don't know exactly. I think what Why do they happens. Want Beethoven again. I think they. What happens is they see Beethoven at this like. They're they're also like out in this area. And uh, on this vacation, and they see Beethoven, and they see the family, and they're trying to get revenge hmm. on the family for what they did to him in the first. Yeah, movie. for what they did to him in the first okay. movie. Um, and there's also, uh, I I don't know. There's also yeah, a litter of puppies. But there is that scene that you were talking okay. about where Rice is trying to 
be I think she's in college at this point, uh, or maybe she's a senior in high school. She's again trying to attract a boy. She's trying to attract she's boy a boy. Crazy, man. Yes. And there is a scene where Beethoven like wrecks an upper balcony or something. Yeah. Like he I remember, totally I like this porch, like this upper porch just falls down. Some frat guys are trying to get her to drink and she doesn't want it. Yep. Oh, yep. 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 That is I it. haven't seen the No, film. that's what happened. <laughs> and then Beethoven oh, saves man. the day. That I'm pretty sure that's what happens. I could like sign me up to write kids' films. I'll <laughs> fill in the blanks. <laughs> I can make this happen. You missed her calling I mean, in the totally 90s. There's totally a formula to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How many Beethovens did they get up to? How many are, are there? Four? Five? I did. I did want to ask that question. Six. I'm gonna okay. Say if four. you guys were to guess, we can come back for part two and and. I would this. guess yeah. five is my guess. I think oh. they got up to because they follow puppies. Like I feel like the puppies thing is is like two five. movies at least. Yeah, five would probably make sense. I would uh, just for being there's different, at least three. I will say there's seven. Okay. Whoa. That's, that's, that's like pretty, Land Before Time That's pretty territory. hefty. Oh, Land Before Time's like on 28 or something <laughs> yeah. like that at this point. A lot of straight to VHS. I bet the second one maybe came out in theaters, Beethoven? I think the second one did come but out But then they probably theaters. just stopped coming out okay. yeah. in theaters. I yeah. Think, I, guess. I mean, like, the second one definitely had all the same cast. Charles Grodin's in it, Bonnie Hunt. Yeah. The three kids. Stanley Tucci. <laughs> yeah. Stanley Tucci, the other guy. And some, some new girl. Like, the vet yeah. guy is not in there. Again. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. All right, so we're going to watch Beethoven, and we'll be back for part two, and we'll tell you what we got wrong, what we got right. I am thrilled to watch this, is this gonna, movie. This is going to be a good one. We don't have ads on this episode, but if we did, they'd go here. But we don't, so enjoy the show. Kids might be interested to know that I am a featured performer Saturday nights at the Padded Zebra. <laughs> oh my gosh, Emily's in the pool! The pool?! danger now were you now we don't want you to get into trouble so we'll let this be our little secret i'd like to call my mother please your mother immediately (laughs) we'll get to that we'll get to that (laughs) there's a lot to talk about there's so much to talk about yes i got a lot to talk about (laughs) i I took a lot of notes on that one (laughs) <laughs> gotta get the gotta get in the mood with that one. Oh, I'm ready. I'm feeling Beethoven e. All right, so we just got done watching Beethoven. Oh um, yeah, this is uh, this is a movie. <laughs> this is a movie. Is it a movie though? With a dog. I have so much to say about this movie. Yeah, let's just try to start from the beginning. I <laughs> oh guess. my god. So the opening reminds me exactly of Blank Check. It's raining. <laughs> there's a warehouse. Yep. The, the it really are doing is. Something. Yeah, you're right. It is kind of a mirror intro almost. Yeah. But what is I, I already forget what is it in the beginning again? So, it's so Oliver Platt and Stanley Tucci. Oliver, I forgot Oliver Platt was the other villain. Yeah, we didn't I was trying to explain that, but I just didn't know his name. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, which they are both in the movie The Imposters together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oliver Platt and Stanley Tucci are they bring a dog to, to a warehouse? A warehouse. Yep, full of other dogs. Mm-hmm. And, and this is not the vets. <sighs> Then no. no, not the vet clinic. clinic. This, this is, like, clinic. This is, like this is a, a warehouse that the vet also owns. This is a warehouse that was like put up on on Zillow as like evil guy hideout yeah. warehouse, <laughs> like classic warehouse. And then yeah, and then the evil vet guy with his crazy Coke bottle glasses, which make his eyes look huge. Was that Billy Bob Thornton's dad? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but he was, he was the best evil guy. His voice, he's like, I need, I need the right thing, miss. Yeah. He was, he was really good at for this role, but he busts out and he's like, oh, I, I want puppies. Give me puppies. I want puppies. Okay, listen, they're bringing these dogs in and he just says, I need puppies. And then the scene ends and I was yeah. like, for what? <laughs> they, <laughs> that, this is what we couldn't figure out in the first part. We could, I could barely figure it out in we the second part. We couldn't figure it out because don't spoil, they didn't explain don't it. Don't spoil what it is. Let's wait till we get to that part. Because that part <laughs> is insane. Why they need these puppies. Everything in this. Okay. I when wrote that. that I wrote that. that happened, I can't let's wait. Just, I can't let's wait. Let's just wait for that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. That is one of my notes. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> so yeah. we are in a pet store at this point, and it's a lot of like weird POV shots of like people looking at Beethoven. Yeah, there's a lot of sale. POV shots in general from Beethoven's point of view. Yeah, that's something that happens quite often. <laughs> it sounds like it was one of your favorite things. <laughs> no, I hated it actually. <laughs> yeah, and uh, everyone seems to be passing up Beethoven. Who's a puppy, adorable puppy. Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, you have to know that they would realize that a St. Bernard is one of the biggest dog breeds there yes. is. Yes, yes. I would not want one either. And there's a, a lady with a leather jacket that's looking for a junkyard dog. She's looking for a mean dog. That's yeah, not a St. Bernard. Like, well, that's what, a yeah, that's, she's like, I've heard St. Bernard's are, I mean, they're big, but they're known for being like, Gentle dogs. Yeah, they're not something yeah. you put in a junkyard. There's small, oh, I, I was kind of sad with Edward. She's like, fine, where are your pit bulls? Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, ooh, another strike for pit bulls. Why are you coming Even to a from pet 1990s? store to buy a junkyard dog? Yeah, you'd think you'd want like a mean raised on the streets kind of dog. Yeah, yeah, is there a sign that just says junkyard dogs in the corner? <laughs> yeah. And then Beethoven ends up peeing on this girl. She yeah, yeah, he does. Pees straight up on her was leather jacket. Was that a joke? joke? Yeah. Or <laughs> did that just happen? They were like, yeah, get it. Dogs <laughs> urinating is a funny bit. There's also a cameo in that where I can't remember the actress's name, so this doesn't really. <laughs> it's a cameo it of someone the we know owner of the pet, or the the no the lady who is at the the pet shop. Mm. She's also in the movie Magnolia, which oh, is a movie yeah. I love. Like she has a party in that, but this is uh, what's that? The pet shop employee. It, the the employee. Uh, yeah. Her face looked familiar, but I couldn't figure. Yeah, okay. she she has a a big part in Magnolia. Mm. So then Oliver then it turns to night. Oliver Platt and Stanley Tucci break into the pet store to steal puppies. And yeah, because they need puppies. And it was an amazing caper. Need... Like when they bust the door, Oliver Platt's about to just bust in because he doesn't know what's up, and Stanley Tucci's like, "Hold on." Clearly, Stanley Tucci is the brains of the operation. <laughs> yes. Where Oliver Platt, I also yeah, that's is... exactly how also, they. Why they both have the same lisp. He might be like... autistic or something. <laughs> he, he, yeah, he does seem kind of like a Lenny type character. Yes. Where he's kind of the goofy, bigger guy. I thought they were both but... pretty dumb. I don't they, know they, about they are that. both pretty dumb, both... but the brains of the operation is clearly <laughs> Stanley Tucci. Because <laughs> he, he uses his cigarette smoke to expose the trip laser on the door for the pet store. And I was like, that's like some straight up spy stuff right there. <laughs> yeah. It seems like they're the same character, just two well, different roles. Well, to be two fair, Stanley Tucci had character. some bitch in cowboy boots. Those that were... is my first note. <laughs> <laughs> they were cow cowboy boots. Cowhide cowboy boots, baby. <laughs> that is my first note. It says cow cowboy boots, and he wears them throughout no. the entire movie. Yeah, yes. he's running and... those things. He can't run in them, nope. yet he has to run the entire time. All the time. Yeah, he's trying to be seen. In his line run. of work, that does not seem like the right type of shoe wear. No, and they look bad. <laughs> they really don't look like they fit. They also don't look like they're comfortable or in any way... He's slipping and sliding <laughs> yeah, in them. <laughs> yeah. And they make it a point to like show these boots a couple times so that it's like his trademark. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, those were amazing. And I have to just say that villains are doing things so difficult in this way. <laughs> Puppies are... You could just buy a puppy or buy a dog or just go to the animal shelter and You're... get dogs. <laughs> They're like $50. You're clearly not an entrepreneur brand. <laughs> and you just get a dog. You gotta maximize your profits by getting them for free. You don't need to be dog thieves yeah. in, in, this, in this world and... at all. <sighs> People will we'll get to it. <laughs> buy dogs. I feel like they should have. They, they should have opened a shelter as like a. They <laughs> have access to a vet. I yeah. don't. Uh, but those are people's owned pets. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. So, 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 so they steal connected. all the puppies out of the they store. They steal the puppies, and as they're they trip the alarm, and as yeah. they're running yeah. out, you know they're driving wildly to yes. the point oh, where yeah. this Jack Russell Terrier uh, gets out of the cage, like falls out of the cage, and then ends up. It's so smart. It, Starts to unlock. Open, opens the door. Yeah. It, it and unlocks the only Beethoven's, Beethoven's cage. cage. But I think that it's... And I, at first I was like, wow, just Beethoven's little dog? Come on. But then I think it was because the they bust into the back because they hear the dogs barking. Yes. And so they send... I don't Oliver remember, Platt. Yeah, Oliver Platt's character has to go back and see why the dogs are barking and he finds out the two escaped. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and there's there's almost like a love story between the Jack Russell Terrier. It's a romance. And, yeah, it's, it's a romance. They're, they're buddies for yeah. sure. Yeah, because they, well, they Beethoven owes him a life debt. That's so, true. You know, Saint Bernards always pay their debts. <laughs> yeah, I think that's their their breed saying. It's <laughs> true. And so this dog just wanders the streets. So let's go back a little bit. Okay. They, they jump out of the tr a moving, moving truck. truck. Yeah, that is Going a great like shot, by the way. Forty miles an hour. The puppy Beethoven looking at like yeah the speeding road and then just goes <laughs> and just jumps. Those dogs. 
are dead. <laughs> Those yeah, are dead I, dogs. I feel like a puppy would not make that choice I, to jump. Yeah, no. I mean, it's not like and it, it's not like a truck like that isn't close to the ground. Like that's got to be a decent distance just to the road. And then the speed too. I'm like those dogs. Yeah, they're driving there. at least like 50 miles. But those an hour. dogs get out of that, and they're both tiny dogs, and yeah. they get out of that truck no problem. And Beethoven hides in a trash can. Correct. And the Jack Russell Terrier kind of looks back, like you coming, and Beethoven's like, I'm good. I'm just hanging on this trash. So, <laughs> so he takes off, <laughs> and that's the one that the henchmen chase after. Yes, the yes. Jack Russell. <laughs> More running. Yeah. Um. So then we open up on the house, which is like the 90s house. Yep. So this is the yeah. house you get when you're the shooting The character's literally show. picking up the newspaper, <laughs> yes. which is so, like, <laughs> and that's paper, such a movie <laughs> thing to do. And right. because Charles Grodin's life is so terrible, the paper boy can't even throw the paper right, and oh it explodes God. into a million <laughs> sheets of paper as he rides by. Yeah, at first I laughed, but then I was also like, I can understand his frustration. <laughs> yeah, I would be like, oh, come on, you have one job to do. Exactly. <laughs> and this is where we're going to the dog POV for, like, a good portion yes. of this opening. And Beethoven just sneaks into the house. We were wondering. He doesn't even really sneak. He just goes, goes into, into the, the house. We were wondering how the family got the dog. The dog just found them. Yeah, it shows yeah. up, gets into the little. But girl's I will bag. say, Andy, you were right. You did say that the there was a sequence where the little girl says, "Can we keep him?" Yeah. So, because uh, all the kids are like, "Oh my god, a puppy!" And even the mom is like, "Wow, I can't believe my husband was so nice for once in his life." Yeah, <laughs> all of the kids gang up on the dad, saying, "Oh, I, constantly." I, yeah. Oh, this part in particular, it's like, "Oh, we didn't think you'd be, have a heart to get a dog. Are you so yeah. nice? I take back everything bad I said about you." <laughs> yeah, the all kids these said. kids are like, "So well, these kids, man, are, we've hated you as our father for so long." <laughs> these kids are actively dicks to their dad <laughs> all the time. Everybody in this movie is a bad person. I'm just gonna. Put that right out there. It's they almost, have bad lives and they're bad people. It's almost the reverse of like Mrs. Doubtfire where the mom is always the good cop because she's always the one that's like just support the kids or yeah. so whatever is going on. Just be nice. And like in Charles Grodin is the mean bad cop all the time where he's like do you understand all the practical reasons we shouldn't have a dog? And he's in the right for those reasons. Because it's a lot yeah. of work. And that dog really and... does some serious damage <laughs> oh, to their man. house. So this, yeah, there's a montage of the dog growing up. Yeah, montage number one. Yeah, well there's only two in this movie. That's so true. So we lucked out. It, there... A dog is a lot of work, and the family pesters him to uh, to take this dog in. Yet, it seems that none of the kids take care of the dog ever. It's always Charles Grodin that has to clean up everything. Until they're about to have to get rid of Beethoven. And then they're like, fine, we'll do something. I exactly. will say, though, uh, from our first part, uh, th- where they have the dog and the dad first sees it, I think is the first crash zoom to the dog and there Charles There are Grodin. a lot of crash I was, I, had, I had a counter, I feel like, of crash zooms in this film, because I know you were predicting a lot of them. <laughs> yes. There's a scene where they're trying to name Beethoven, and the two suggestions <laughs> yes. they come up with were Ultimate Warrior and MC Hammer, which are great dog names. Well, no, those and were the only two they said out loud. <laughs> there was okay. one they didn't say. But they're like, and it was the littlest girl's suggestion, and it was like, uh, I think it was just Dick. Because oh. the mom takes on, she's that's like, like a uh, that's word. a yeah. body part. And they're like, but that's what you call Uncle George or something. Yeah. That apparently this is some no, funny joke. No, but then joke. there was also one where Charles Grodin's got picked and she was just like immediately. Yeah, she wouldn't she read it out loud. She didn't even read it. She was like, George. <laughs> what was on that paper? I want to know what horrible name that he suggests. I don't know. And we'll never know. And the little girl is playing Beethoven. And then we crash As zoom on yes. the picture of Beethoven. Yes. That was amazing. And Charles Grodin just says with such disdain, Beethoven. As Because she j- the little girl just said, he'll tell us what he wants to be named. And then yeah, plays Beethoven. The whole scene was forced. That's what little girls do. Is, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. They crash zoom on, on Beethoven. <laughs> Luton... <laughs> Actual Beethoven. Yes. And it seems very much like Clockwork Orange, actually. <laughs> it does kind of feel that way. <laughs> oh. But yeah, the crash zooms from that scene alone were amazing. So we go through the montage of them raising Beethoven. And during this time, they're still looking for an owner for the dog. Charles Grodin's still putting up, like, foul F- Flyers yes. all over the neighborhood. And this dog is almost, like, full-grown at this okay, point. Okay, yeah, this montage... the dog? I sw- this montage had to have taken place over, like, at least two years, right? Yeah. I... I would imagine because so. he goes from puppy that, to that full dog grown grows up quick. 
And I mean, this movie's barely 90 uh, minutes. You were right, though, in that they, there is the scene where all the family members come in carrying appropriately sized bags of food yep. for each of them. So the little yeah. girl has a tiny carton, and then it gets up to Charles Grodin has a man-sized yes. bag of food, which is not a good idea and for And no wonder this family needs money from the air freshener business, because yes. they should just buy the bulk bag. Why are you <laughs> buying the smaller bags when you can just... I, I, so I <clears throat> I didn't remember the, um, the whole air freshener part of the the story mm-hmm. so when i was seeing that i was like oh yeah i remember because the the giant nose that is yeah. on this yep. building covered in ivy that that the image what of that building that? stuck in my head as a kid because yeah the, the ivy covered building with a giant nose on it i feel like they wrote his job around having that nose prop like, we have this <laughs> nose prop <laughs> we have to use what it. can we do for a job for this character where we can use the prop Yes. Uh, yeah, and I didn't. We weren't clear on what he was trying to accomplish with David Duchovny and, and the Patricia lady too. Heaton was in. Yes, this that's film. right. Mm-hmm. That's the girl he plays. Yeah, with. everyone loves um, Raymond. Yeah, and so and it was that they were. He was looking to find an investor for his company, right, to get it out further, to expand it. Yeah, but grow they the company. they immediately thought that he had a really good idea because they wanted to steal it. They wanted to take over his company. Yeah, I didn't well, understand that was the, this. No, that yeah. So that was the line. sneaky thing is that uh, the whole plot line with them is that. They want to invest in his company. He's so excited that yeah. he's willing. He's like, "Oh, great!" But the, instead, they wrote like a sneaky contract that was going to be like, "Oh, it's we it's we're doing it for like property. six months, and then it becomes all of ours." So that's why the scene where Beethoven like ruins their meeting in the backyard is they're trying to get him to sign that contract without reading it. This is all stuff I never noticed as a kid. I don't pay yeah. attention at all. That, yeah. that whole sequence was very long. And I will felt. say, like, Charles Grodin does not treat his wife very well because the whole she time... She doesn't treat him very well either. Well, they're both no, dicks to But she's other. trying to, like... She's actually like, hey, let's slow down. Let's try to read this. And he's just like, shut up, honey. You don't know business, basically. <laughs> yeah. and there's some really funny little bits she does, though. Like, when they have their first meeting in the factory... Like, he's sitting, Charles Grodin's at his desk, the other two on the other side, and she's trying to find, like, a place to sit. And, like, kind of yes, leans on I the did desk. Notice that. I did notice that. And she's like, uh, just sort of leans she awkwardly. Have a voice I, that, that felt very awkward. I wasn't yeah. sure if that was, like, a mistake. But, so yeah, so they're trying to pressure him into signing, and she's trying to stop it. And that's, and yeah, the whole time he's just like, don't, don't listen, don't, don't talk and they, to me. They this invite- is business stuff. David Duchovny and Pat- Patricia Heaton over to dinner in their backyard. They're yes. like, let's just cook <clears throat> out. Like a barbecue. And they were not pleased. The disdain <laughs> in his voice when he's like, barbecue was yeah. amazing. <laughs> yeah, these... <laughs> They're the worst people. They are the, they were, like, the stereotypical so rich like douchebags. Snobs. Yeah. Exactly. And we jumped ahead of this, but I just want to go back. Um, there's a scene where they're all eating breakfast. <laughs> And this is where we get to see one yes. of the first animatronic dog heads. Yes. In this I, film. Yes. That freaked me oh out God. when I saw I, it. Yes. When I saw oh. that dog's eyeballs moving, <laughs> oh I was my like, gosh, the, the crash no. you on Beethoven rolling his eyes happens like six <laughs> no. times in this film. It's always a weird And it's animatronic, always amazing. It's an animatronic puppet. It was unsettling. That just <laughs> freaks me out. It's like, and it does the eye roll. And I'm, oh my gosh. It is terrifying. It is the most frightening thing i've ever seen so beethoven ends up having like a ferris bueller's day out kind of thing yes. yeah he just so, goes around town and people treat him like a people, person people yeah. treat him as if he does this every single day and it's totally fine like when he like he shows up at the bakery and the lady like gives beethoven a bear claw like he's just yeah. straight up like oh and she holds up one pastry and beethoven's like please and she's like hold on and gets the big one was that they're... an animatronic part <laughs> <laughs> no, that was a real dog in that thing. but there's a couple times in this movie, dogs should not be eating sweets at all. They, it's yeah. eating cookies. It's they feed eating, him all sorts yeah. of things he shouldn't be eating. But, bear claws. But well, the bear claw part was good because that reiterates like that the other dog is still out there living on the streets. The yeah, one that saved Beethoven's yeah. life. So Beethoven brings the bear claw to that dog. To also, I think that, that dog should not be eating. But in, in retrospect, I anyway. felt kind of bad for that dog. Right. Like Beethoven have finds home. this home and this dog's been living on the streets And this is like two years time. later. This is like a homeless dog. Right. Right. He's been out there for a while. He's street smart. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so Beethoven's like, hey, you know, I still owe you my life debt. So here's a bear claw. And they have like this little nice little bro buddy moment in the alley. Yeah, Beethoven escapes from his cage, which has a comically uh, <laughs> I wrote this dug down. up hole that is right next to the dog. Where house, somehow they just never and see isn't it? concealed at all, and yet no like. There's it's a scene so where Charles Grodin has to say, "So that's how you've been getting out." Like yes. he clearly knew Beethoven was getting out, but didn't investigate at all. <laughs> like, that was an amazing scene. 
but we did have also the montage, not really a montage, but the scenes, each scene where he helps each of the kids with their issues. Yeah, so one of the bullies is actually from Rookie of the Year. I yes. noticed that as yeah, soon as I saw yeah, that. Blonde. This and was this movie a, came out right before. One year yeah. before Rookie of the Year. So, so this launched his career into Rookie of the did. Year. It did. And also the son is from Step by Step, which I didn't uh, know. Yeah, I recognized him from something. In the, yeah, yeah, you're right. He is from Step. He's by also step. like a little Bill, a uh, little Bill Gates. He's very, yeah, he's, 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 he's a little, little Bill Gates. Gates. I mean, we'll call him Little Bill Gates. <laughs> little Bill. <laughs> little Bill. Little Bill. Uh, so, and the dog plays is is a sweet wingman to Rice. Yeah. Okay. Or, she is like their hormones must be going off the charts because she's sitting watching some very sweaty basketball players <laughs> who are oh playing God. it's shirts and skins, and the shirtless ones are like seriously greased up. And she's sitting there just, like, drinking it up. And, and apparently <laughs> girls just can't use a, the gym time. Like, they have to sit in the bleachers while the yeah, boys I wasn't are playing sure. It seemed like that was, was during that, school. But yeah, it, wasn't, it didn't seem like it was Why would practice. the basketball team be playing during school hours? That's usually an after-school activity. I thought it was just a gym day. Yeah, it was like a gym class Right, or something. but you're right. All the, only the boys were playing basketball. Probably, I assume the girls can't play on skins. So, you know, it's it doesn't work that way. I don't know. This is before, like, girls ti- can't Title 19, which said right. that girls should have the same opportunities to play sports. Early 90s, baby. Actually, that was in, like, the 70s. <laughs> oh, <was it>? <laughs> <laughs> Sit them on yeah. the bleachers. They can't play basketball. So uh, Beethoven takes a stick over to the cute guy to lure him over to Rice. And the kid yep. is very willing to follow that dog. Yeah, they're really excited to Yeah, chase he's the like, dog. oh, where are you taking me, boy? To, ri- to, to, to Rice. Right to Rice. And apparently that's good enough for them to start off a conversation. Yeah, and we don't get anything else Nothing until else the very end. They only say like three words to each other. Like, hey, what's up? All right, bye. Rice. And she, then she freaks out because yeah. he yeah. knows her name. He knows my name. At the very end of the film, she gets a phone call from him. So he yes. was like, oh, she was on the news. Now I can call no, I her because she's kind of famous. She's cool, yeah. And I got to get in on some of that. So can we talk about the thing yet? <laughs> Are we there yet? Are we there I don't yet. think we're there yet. We uh, say, yeah. oh, so Beethoven, Beethoven helps Lil Bill with the bullies. But the kid has no idea that Beethoven scares Never, the boys away. I hope that we're all on the same page with this thing. Oh, we know what's going we are. <laughs> I just have a note. I forget what it means, but there was some MIDI music like playing in this movie that was odd. Some I was saying, like, in the beginning odd. of this film, they have like that little orchestral soundtrack that plays during the Beethoven, like, finding the house and all that stuff. And I, I wrote down, this music is on point. Because that was some good movie music. <laughs> yes. And I, then I felt like it, the whole, like, little, there's little orchestral bits throughout the film that are good. But you're right. There's also some weird music choices that I, happen. I think there's only three pieces of music book. in this movie. It's like that <laughs> classic, like, family home, good, yeah. you know, it's, a, it's like a very soothing. And then uh, kind of like, like racing type music where it's like and like they just keep switching between those two songs the entire movie yeah more or less uh and then there's one other i can't remember but yeah but i do remember some like one or two spots where i'm like there's some weird music in the background so let's get to it okay we got villain's plan oh what is the plan (laughs) so when this happened i so the whole the, okay, the vet is yeah. Try to explain it. Is essentially <laughs> testing ammunition. So <laughs> the bullets. He's testing what a bullet does. Because so in a okay. So I'm in a fan. Fan. Okay, somebody's <laughs> paying the vet to test the bullet to shoot a dog to see what the bullet. So does. yeah, the idea is that in That's addition to being a vet, he also has his side business, which is conducting experiments on animals for cheap. For companies and stuff. Specifically these, no, shooting a dog. Well, this, one, a this one was like a, are, a firearms company wanted to know. These are bullets. He says, these are bullets that explode. He does say. <laughs> and I was like, where are you going to use that? <laughs> these, yeah. So the a fire, some firearms manufacturer approaches Mr. <laughs> Unlicensed Animal Tester yeah. and says, we need you to test these bullets because we refuse to pay for a real place to test these. The, for, yeah, and they are exploding bullets. <sighs> And they need to find out if they can penetrate a thick skull. Like, is that why he needs a big yeah, dog? That's why he needs, he a, needs big a big dog. He literally says, dog. we need a big dog like a St. Bernard. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so in the beginning, he's collecting puppies. Then all of a sudden, there's a switch where he needs a big dog just to shoot. You're right. Because he, yeah, he, he only puppies? wants puppies. And right. now he needs like, oh, I need a, and I now need a, big, I need dog. a big dog. Why did he need the puppies in the first place? He's, that wasn't even explained. Well, he because he's, he 
he's doing just experiments in general doing because that comes up later too because the needles which we talked about yeah uh, those needles. are for a vague a very vague reference where he's like uh bring the saint bernard so i can shoot it also bring the small one for the chemical test that's all he says is for okay. the chemicals test yeah. And that's what's in those He's syringes. given you very little he information. He just says chemicals. The, uh, so you're just supposed to infer oh, that he is like this fly-by-night testing operation where all the unethical animal testing that companies, like, can't he, get real companies to do, they go to him and have them do it off the books. The other funny part is that, so these bullets explode, but when he gets ready to actually shoot Beethoven, <laughs> he's shooting him within, like, four feet away from I the dog. I don't think truly understands the capabilities of these bullets. <laughs> I've written down several times, there has got to be a better way <laughs> to test bullets. They, well, they, they, <laughs> they, they normally test them on, like, dead pig carcasses. Yeah, they have that gels. But this, I guess this company, exactly. this evil, evil gun company wanted them tested on live animals. Why couldn't it have been, a, it could have been a dead dog that they could have just shot with a bullet. He works at a vet's animals. place, it could just literally be like we have to put our dog down because he's old <laughs> and that okay. is a good place Here's to those source those. And then yeah. i'm gonna just take that dog because no one's gonna know well, well he's on a time crunch you know he's on a time crunch for the testing which is why he begins to plant the seed <coughs> with charles Grodin's family about vicious saint bernard's being vicious dogs just like that junkyard dog lady thought in the beginning so he has to test the bullets at the at the end of the film he's gonna shoot the dog but how is that going to be recorded? It's not <laughs> video <laughs> tape. Then if you take his word for oh the bullets, I guess went really yeah, well. I guess the, his plan is just to have yeah, the company take his word for you. Like yeah, the bullets, the totally bullets were blew up their dog's head. Just also, take my word for there's it. There's also a funny thing where he technically gets the money before he even does the thing because we get a shot of inside of his like little like safe and he's putting money in there. Yeah. <laughs> they paid him. It. Yeah, I mean you said it's cash. He got paid it's like great off the job. Books, off the books animal yeah. testing that paid in cash because it's under the table. And yeah, like that that was not a very empirical setting for those tests. I also liked how I mean we're kinda of jumping right to the end. Yeah, but, I mean we're gonna have to get but, there soon. Yeah, like he's gonna shoot Beethoven and then Charles Grodin busts in and just gets in front and that doctor switches immediately from like, Alright, I was gonna just shoot a dog, but now I'm gonna shoot a person and a dog. So now yeah. I've scaled up from testing on animals illegally the to raised. murder. Like straight up like like what was his plan at that point? He's like, Alright, I'll kill you. It did not take much to push him over the edge for that I part. Don't know. Also, like, oh, boy. this has got to be an ammunition or a firearms company. Why are they going to a vet to test their that, weapons? Why, are why aren't they, they testing them themselves? Well, because they, 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 they wanted them tested on live animals, which I'm guessing why? you just can't do. Because <laughs> they're evil. <laughs> why wouldn't they choose it in the field, too, if they really wanted to <laughs> test know. bullets to see but, what happened? I mean, th this really shouldn't be the case. There's it's got to be, like, bored. But I never, <laughs> like, I never understood this as a kid, apparently, because this happened, and I, like, fell on the floor. I did not remember this being the case. Like, I remember the bad guy being evil and the syringes. I don't remember him be talking about shooting Beethoven <laughs> in the head with exploding bullets. And I don't know how I missed that because oh, that's boy. pretty big. God. That's a, we just blocked it out of our memory. It was amazing. I was like, this is a dark movie. <laughs> how does a Jesus. small town vet get wrapped up in an ammunition? <laughs> why did he the money's to too good, at yeah, Brad. Why did he become a vet in the first place and be so willing to shoot a dog in the head I that's feel like, literally probably two years old? I feel like vets make pretty good money and yet he still needs to run his <laughs> off-the-books illegal animal testing business on the oh side. Oh my god. Uh, so yeah, we find oh, that this guy. work for him getting the dogs for his testing. And that's what this all villain is. This villain is very for. villainy. He really is. He's Even just, down to the voice, like I said. He's got villain. a great villain voice. Uh, we were kind of accurate on how they figure everything out with the vet. Because the vet comes to the house after yeah. implying yeah, to Charles Grodin it. that St. Bernard's a vicious... Comes to the house, I guess, I don't remember if he said it was just like a random house call. It he was, was and the mom answers the door and just takes the guy's word for it that he's a vet. And then, but he just looks like a regular dude. Well, and also, she, she takes house. his word for it, lets him in, and then has him go back to see Beethoven and does not supervise this at all. Right. No. She's like, I got dishes to do, and goes and does the dishes. And he's back there, coat, coat no one around, so he's free to pour fake blood on his arm, smack Beethoven around until he jumps up, and then be like, oh, he bit me. Yeah, and this is the little girl witnesses this yes. happen. She and so it's him like dudes. the vet's word versus the little girl, and the and Charles Grodin takes the vet's side probably because he's worried about some type well, of lawsuit. And or I something. would understand like if a, like a vet who you assume is above board yeah. is like the dog bit me, and your little eight year old is like no. 
never do anything wrong. I would expect a little kid to say, my dog could never do something wrong. Yeah. And that not necessarily be the case. Because they're going to love their animals. And I would I would probably choose the fast word over the kids. So, I, like, again, yeah, Charles Grodin is portrayed know, like, as such a villain, but I think he's just a practical guy. They're all bad people in this movie. Every <laughs> so character we, is we, the bad person. We get this sequence, like, right after that. After they're... I think it's, like, Bonnie Hunt and Charles Grodin. They're kind of, like having this disagreement about the next step after yeah. Beethoven bit right. the vet. And so Charles Grodin's like, we have to get rid of the dog. And Charles Grodin says, my business is falling apart or something like that. And then Bonnie Hunt says, your family's falling apart. And I, I thought immediately, are they? Well, I, I will don't. say... I they, didn't it, think so. It really seemed like uh, Grodin like, was disconnected from his family <laughs> and that they were like 10 seconds away from divorce. <laughs> That's a yeah. lot of this movie. Because she seems yeah. to be putting up with a lot of his stuff, and it's portrayed that way. I again, I still feel like Grodin was fairly practical on most of this stuff, but like she's just like, wow, you're just the worst oh, through I mean, most I, of this film. I, I kind of just felt that like they had their like disagreements, and those were kind of the moments that we were seeing. Well, he kept wanting her to go back to work, and she was just like, I don't want to do that. And he's like, yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Okay, she's very family I focused, guess. and he right. was business focused, right. and that's what he learned. And so yeah, so they portray. He's like, oh, I only care about my making more money in my business and, and money they need money because i think bonnie hunt says that and he suggests that she goes to work too and they right just don't yeah <laughs> right and so doesn't. i mean but then it's like kind of a weird thing where she's not willing to work because she wants to stay with the family but then they don't have enough money but then she's also saying they don't have enough money and she's also saying that he's not focusing on his family because he's focusing on his work she's a bad Person. It's Everyone kind of in this movie is a, <laughs> is just the worst character. I mean, uh, Charles Grodin's like thrown into this like catch twenty two where he's like the bad guy in every scenario. He's, everyone just gets down on him. But I will say he is like grumpy for no yes, reason. Yes, that's true. There's plenty of times where he's just grumpy, Gus. We we missed a part, and I'm gonna go back because we skimmed over it. Uh, right. When uh, Patricia Heaton and David Duchovny get wrapped up in the Beethoven strap, oh my gosh. and they get dragged over a fence and down a sidewalk. Yep. Yeah, I I was that thinking is the most ridiculous thing. Shall they hit the fence and do their double flip <laughs> in the air? <laughs> they do a double flip in the air. <laughs> I literally again. thought I was like, how did they shoot this? <laughs> I was kind of wondering that too. <laughs> yeah. It looked crazy. Crazy. It looked totally it, it crazy. It almost like stop motion. Right. There's, there's a, a part where there's stunt doubles that are strapped down into chairs being pulled across the sidewalk. <laughs> I didn't that, notice. that is what's happening. I didn't, I didn't yeah. notice I didn't that. Even and look. they're like, you would just fall out of the chair. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the were, were those like wheelie chairs? They, they were garden, oh. just garden chairs. But and I did like Bonnie Hunt's them like Beethoven's the only one that had the sense to, to give those people what they deserve. <laughs> oh yeah, do something about drag it. Drag them to, through. To, yeah, to drag them down a block in lawn yeah. chairs. And like, if you're gonna have a motivation to put a dog down, David Duchovny and Patricia Heaton have the motivation. <laughs> right? That's yeah. This moment. <laughs> <laughs> that like, and she, uh, Patricia Heaton, goes over to she like instigates it. She like goes over to pet Beethoven. But and she brings seemed him to over. genuinely like him as a dog. I, she was like she was giving him baby talk and stuff. I but don't know how to read that scene because they were still trying to distract Charles Grodin from yes, reading. They yes. were trying to keep him from reading she, the contract. She was also into the dog. She was also like, oh wow, a St. Bernard. Like, and she knew about St. Bernard's. She seemed to genuinely like no, David Duchovny was kinda like, you're a big stupid dog. And then they yes. do another eye roll for Beethoven. Yeah. Um it's so frightening. Yeah, like Beethoven is smart in this movie. I he think totally I think is we smart. Did and we get talked that about wrong. that. He's a person. He, yeah, he's, yeah. He's he got knows a human consciousness. what's going Which on. Which I guess makes sense because the movie's about him. It's about him yes. in, in this environment of this family. But we, I we, think it's more we've about gone him back and forth about that in the first half about whether or not Beethoven understood what's going on. He is actually smart. Like, he's literally understanding that he's being undermined by David Duchovny. He can turn on the television. Yep, and watch it. And just be like, <laughs> oh, and they're watch yep, it. in the middle of the night when he snuck back into the house. All right, so let's move into the end of the film. Go to the end So game. the evil vet has put ketchup all over his hand and <laughs> tricked the family into thinking the dog bit him. Yep. And that he needs to be put down because of it. Yeah, so he says, you need to like bring the dog to my vet and have us put him down or I will sue you. Right. Does he say... Does he say he's going to sue He them? said he'd have to, or his only other course would be a law, yeah, legal action. Okay. He okay. does I say that. So we were that. right about that. So it's basically, you know, kill the dog or I sue you. Yeah. So there's this moment in the car between Charles Grodin and Beethoven where Charles Grodin tells this really sweet story. Well, that's right. Okay. Before, even was, before that scene. Okay, hold on. The whole family is like crying and they're like, oh my God, we can't do this. 
Charles Grodin, like, sneaks out of the house with that dog and doesn't give any of them the chance to say goodbye. Yeah. He's like, yeah. which, I mean, I kind of get because I'm sure it'd be hard to tear everyone away from the dog, but it's, he's totally just like, I'm going to get out of here with nobody noticing. And, and the they, little girl even calls him, like, a dog killer. Yes. Dog murderer. Dog something. murderer as they're driving away, like, and they all chase down the street after the car because they realize he's trying to get away. Mm-hmm. Oh, that was great. But yeah, then they have this heart-to-heart in the car. Where Charles Grodin tells them that he, his dad also had to put his dog down. And it was yeah. really sad, and that's why he didn't want to have a dog. Because yeah. he doesn't want to go through that part. Yeah, yeah. And he was crying in the car. And, and that he really likes Beto. He's like, you're, you're not a bad dog. You're a, yeah. I've actually come back. I, I felt like right. that was the moment where he started to... Like, he actually felt for uh, this this coming up sequence where he was gonna where Beethoven was going to die, basically. Yeah. yeah. He says, like... I think he even said a line where he's like, you're my dog too. Right, yeah, yeah exactly. he does. Yeah. Which, which seemed genuine. It was, a, I, it was a really, actually a really moment. good little monologue from him about like why he is the way he is about Beethoven. And yeah, seeing that he really does care about Beethoven. Yeah. Um, and that he's not happy about this. Yeah, it was the one genuine, sweet, awesome thing in the whole movie. Yeah. So he takes it to the vet. Then it gets ridiculous again. <laughs> it gets very <laughs> ridiculous. Yep. So yeah, he, he takes him to the vet, leaves... The family has, like, this moment where they um, ponder the whole situation. Well, yeah. and the vet specifically, when he leaves, they say, we can't put him down today because I guess the animal killer guy that they hire is gone for the day. Yeah. So they have to, so yeah. Charles Gordon has to pay for boarding for a day for the dog to stay there. Right. Before they put him down. What a kick in the dick that is. Right. You know? That's what I was oh, thinking. I was like, you, your dog is getting murdered and you owe us money. We will have to charge you for a day of boarding. But it did give them the piece the of information where later on when they go back right. to get the dog, mm-hmm. the vet says, oh, he was killed Already or whatever. destroyed. And, and he's like, no, I paid for this boarding fee or whatever. He said that yeah. wasn't going to happen until yep. the next day. And that's when he grabs the doctor's arm because he's going to turn and realizes that he was never bit in the first place. Right. Yeah. And that's when they're like, something's going on. That's the big reveal. And, then, and that <laughs> vet gets clocked, right? Yeah, Charles yeah. Robin punches him right in the Straight right in the up. mush. And I was like, well, if you were worried about legal action before, now you're in big trouble. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then the family goes to the payphone across the street, and I remember thinking, a payphone? And I was like, oh, that's right, this is like 92. Not just a payphone, a phone booth. Oh, yeah, phone yes. booth. Straight yep. up, old school Superman And there's like a row booth. of them. There's like three... Three phone booths in a row right there. And I was like, that's just something you don't see today. No. They don't exist anymore. I bought it then. I'm sure they existed. And they call the police to try and explain that he lied, stole their dog, and killed it. Yeah. And the police give no shits. The kids say, like, look out, there's the doctor. Yeah. So now they're on the chase. So, yeah, now they follow him. To the bad guy warehouse. To the to the exploding gun warehouse. Yes. Oh, but, you know, prior to this happening, uh, the two henchmen recaptured the Jack, Jack Russell, Russell that saved that's true, Beethoven's that's true. life. Mm-hmm. Um, so that dog got taken away again and is now in the bad warehouse. Yes. Um, so they take Beethoven to the warehouse already. Like he had the goons take him after the dad dropped him off. And so now we have this whole sequence where... Beethoven is about to be shot. Yes. The vet is probably trying to just dispose of the body as quick as possible yeah, and well, shoot him and uh, yeah, do and this experiment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Charles Grodin is sneaking up on them through the roof. Through the roof. The yeah, well, he warehouse. also, the, it, well, and it pans into them, like, throwing all these boxes of paperwork in an incinerator, like, big chimney yep. thing. And it's specifically, like, the the vet said, basically, because they the family had found out about the Beethoven scam, they had a close-up shop. And that included, like, killing all the animals at once and just I disposing know. of them. Yeah, what a bummer. Like, he was straight up, like, kill all the dogs. Now, I'm sure that's what they were, it seemed like that's what they're doing Yeah, that's anyway. the end goal for them. But, <laughs> yeah, and even then, that's when, uh, what like, one of the henchmen is just like, oh my gosh, like, kill all the dogs? Like, even he was like, this is a little... It's a little, oh, yeah. They had to have been killing insane. dogs up into this point. That's though. what I'm... I mean, something... That seems like their the job is, like, deadly animal testing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Charles Grodin busts through, through the, the skylight. Through falls in through the skylight. That would have on... for sure broken his legs. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> and he, he does... Falls he falls on the, the henchman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Falls on the henchman, and then um, that's when the little... The little son mm-hmm. drives the car through the building, right? Well, not before the yeah. The vet is like, I'm gonna. Well, I was gonna just shoot Beethoven, but now I'll shoot you too. And the Jack Russell, I think Beethoven had freed the Jack Russell. Oh yeah. And so he kind of repaid the life debt. 
And then Jack Russell bites the vet right in the nuts. Right in the nuts. Right in the nuts. Which comes to the point where the Jack Russell and Beethoven are the only ones who can really take down the henchmen. Yep. Because they escape in the beginning together. (laughs) Yep. And then they're back together again to basically uh, foil the entire plot. Right. So that's when the guy, the vet, like, after he gets bit in the nuts, shoots the gun in the air. And that's when the, the family's like, or the family's like, oh my gosh. And the mom had already started to go in to find Charles Grodin. Because mm-hmm. he was like, if I'm not back in 15 minutes, come find me. And she was like, I'm going to go look for your dad. So she leaves. <laughs> and it, so it's just the kids in the car. And that's when the kid's like, oh my God, that was a gunshot. We have to do something. And drive the car through like three walls. One of which is like a steel door. Yeah. <laughs> and... They get into the, they bust into the vet room and yeah, launch the cart full of needles into the vet guy. The chemical test, which was meant for the Jack Russell, which is where the vet was like, bring the, that one too for the chemical test. Right. And the, 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 the syringes don't get like plunged into him at all. He no. He gets stuck with needles. That's <laughs> not that just, so, no, but, I'm just kind of. So he gets stuck with the needles, but I think if you look back at it after the fact, all of that fluid is out of the, the syringe. I don't remember seeing that. I remember. Seeing, I, they, I think I they, they were. I think they did a flash there. of it where all of that liquid was inside him, but no one pushed the syringes. Right. Right. But yeah, so he gets huh. injected with the chemical test instead of the dog. Yeah, and uh, all that makes him do is have a weird face and slump over. He's uh, got to be dead. With how much, <laughs> he isn't he's dead. He's not though. dead because he's back in the news report. It's you crazy. Think oh, well, I think that w- that just means that was a successful chemical test. You know, he didn't kill him. <laughs> and uh, the cherry on top of it is the dog chase scene where every dog in the warehouse is loose <laughs> yes. and chasing after Oliver Platt. Yeah, because the family just Stanley busts Tucci, in and like, opens all the cages. Like, yeah. what was their plan with that? Like, I get that you, the, you're like, oh my god, these animals are here. But you just won. You don't need to open all the cages and just let all these dogs out into the city. And they're just running through, like, Chinatown? Or just some, like, <laughs> yes, busy yes, yes. I thought the same. What is yeah. that? <laughs> There's, like, there... cranes and, like, the dogs have to hop over and Where things. does this movie take place? <laughs> I <don't> I, <laughs> so... I was looking at that and I was like, they're in a warehouse district, but all of this like fruit was set up like as if people were like ready to buy it. Definitely it definitely impl- it seemed to me that this takes place like in LA or like in California because they have like palm trees in front of their houses. Yes. Which is what he's stapling it looks all the stuff like, to. It looks like that was LA, but then when they got to the warehouse stuff, that all looked like New York, basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking like, or like yeah, industrial San Francisco for the Chinatown stuff too. Yes. I was like... Yeah, this is... I had no idea. But yeah, all of a sudden the dogs are running through that. He's running away in his cowboy boots. Yeah, and the logistics of shooting that scene has to be I, such a nightmare. Oh my gosh. Oh Having my like gosh. 50 dogs wrangled to running through a street. get them all to run. Yeah, and they're all kind of like... They're jumping into each other and knocking each other around. There's one dog that has like a lettuce in his head that he's like... He like somehow just picked up and is running around <laughs> with. Right. I don't know if you noticed yeah. that. I, <laughs> I didn't. I'll have so, to like go back and look. So yeah, that scene. And then we cut to like the epilogue. No, they, well, they, no, they no, jump they, over oh, a barbed right. wire fence. Into a junkyard into, into the and junkyard. I was like is that the lady's it's junkyard from back. the beginning when she was like I need a mean junkyard dog <laughs> and I was like oh so it's smart. her junkyard I didn't even think about that maybe it is and then it turned out she just got like Dobermans or something yeah she definitely had two Doberman pinchers <laughs> yeah. and they were not happy and I was like well they're dead and they're how, not dead how does one scale a barbed wire fence isn't that like the <laughs> hardest thing when ever you, to well, do when, when you're being happening? chased by 50 dogs yeah, you find you, a way just they're not like evil caught. dogs. They're like cute little puppies, most of them. Yeah, but you abused them. I That's, mean, I'm sure they're they're, they, they, they just job. watched the doctor get bit in the nuts by Jack Russell. They're like, I don't want my nuts bit. Yeah. And this is like pre-Planet of the Apes, but like Dog, dog <laughs> of the Apes. <laughs> that would be great It's a dog point. uprising. <laughs> it totally was a dog uprising. So let's, let's get to the epilogue and just end this thing. Um, <laughs> the family's in their living room watching the crime scene happen where like the vet is Coming out of a courthouse. Yeah, with yeah. the henchmen. With the henchmen. And they're like 120 cases of animal abuse or something yep. that he was charged with. Right. And they interview the family. Yep. And- they interview Charles Grodin. And <laughs> the lady literally says, so are you a dog lover? And he gives he gives the best like I was just thinking of the best local news interview reaction. <laughs> it's real. He just sits like, like for like, five what? minutes, wow. just like this, uh, with well, making not, faces. Not originally, <laughs> <laughs> and then it, it cuts to them watching that news footage at home. Yeah, and Rice gets a call from the boy who's like, "Ooh, she's famous now, so now I want to date her." And then they go to bed, and it does the slow pan out. Where Charles Grodin and the mom are saying goodnight to all the dogs from that warehouse that are now living in their house. How is that a thing? How is every <laughs> single 
I didn't when, get it myself. So when they turn in the the villains, they just keep the dogs. It is, that, I guess they just kept the dogs. Those don't go to a vet or they, go to they, an animal yeah, shelter. Well, or... Even if they could take them, they should not take all those dogs. They don't know what those dogs have been through. And yeah, they're it, already struggling financially, as we've seen through this whole movie. They can't support that many there's dogs. There's no way. And, and <laughs> the focus of the movie should be that the family gets back together. But from seeing how many dogs are in that room, I'm like sitting there going, this is going to push them over the Charles edge. Charles Grodin is going to leave. Dogs. He's going to snap. He's like, going to kill all the dogs himself. Why did they just have Beethoven? Like, I know they were trying to say a joke, but I didn't find it funny. And I saw that and I was just like, that looks terrible. You're like, this is going to ruin their home life. Yes. And the very um, last person in the <laughs> cast... Jordan Ghost Gorsuch Levitt. <laughs> Joseph, Joseph Gordon Levitt. JGL. JGL played is, played student number one. Student number two, two I think. Was it two? Yeah, oh my god. Two. Not even first build student. And I swear to god I did not see him at all. <laughs> I didn't either. I went back to look for him and yeah. I couldn't really find him. So um while well, the nerdy kid is looking at the bus um stop, there's yeah. a kid outside the bus stop who get on the bus. He's one of the kids. Oh. He has no lines. I don't know why he gets credited in this film. He had to have been in like a deleted scene where he had a line. <laughs> yeah, I, I I had no idea, and then I'm watching the credits, which I don't even usually watch the credits, and I saw Joseph Gordon Levitt, and I was like, what? I was like, was this one of his like first acting gigs? Yeah. One more thing. Yes. It's the executive producer was Ivan Reitman on the film. Yes. That, who, that I don't know who was that. Ivan Reitman, he was in Ghostbusters. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's directed Ghostbusters. Directed Ghostbusters. Okay. Yes. Wow. EP. There, yeah. there are two things that I do want to say. Okay. Um, we did have our little guess as to how many Beethoven movies there are. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, what... Do you guys remember what you said? I don't remember what I said. I, I, think, I think I said it's... six, but... I think I said five. Someone said four. Someone said, I think, five. I said seven. Do you want to just... There's uh, seven. Take, no? Do you want to take a gander at the correct number? <laughs> are we see. counting, like, uh, half movies? Because aren't there some Beethoven? There's like, eight. Six there are half? eight Beethoven what? movies. Yes. One, I think, is an animated movie. Let me go through it. Be this movie came out in 92. Beethoven's second, 93. Beethoven's third, it took seven years, came out in 2000. <laughs> Beethoven's fourth, 2001, a year later. Beethoven's fifth, 2003. Yeah, third must have made some money because they're like, next two, like, let's pump these out. Then after Beethoven's fifth, they dropped it. They didn't do a six. They just called it Beethoven's Big Break oh, in man, 2008. <laughs> Beethoven's <laughs> Christmas Adventure oh. in 2011. And most recently, Beethoven's Treasure Tale. In 2014. They made a Beethoven, Beethoven movie Beethoven two years two, ago. They made a... What? It was, I have to believe it's, it was direct-to-video. Yes. Like... It has, um... Oh, I, I actually looked through it. Uh... Jonathan Silverman is in it, and Christy Swanson are in it. Really? Yeah. I gotta want to watch it now. <laughs> I, I, I skimmed through it a little bit. It's really bad. Well, yeah. <laughs> and I also kept saying, I thought this movie like ended with a forest scene. I actually I skimmed through Beethoven's second, yeah. and it ends with yep. them in a forest. Okay. Yes. Like, falling off a waterfall or something. And also, this movie is written by John Hughes. What? I did Under not a pseudonym, know that. though. Under correct? a pseudonym. Yeah. I did not know this was... It feels wow. like a very, like, first draft of okay. John Hughes. <laughs> and <laughs> not only that, wow. there are literally eight people that were chosen for the, the part uh, that Charles Grodin played yes. before they settled on I him. did know about this. And mm -hmm. I do remember, in the first part, I also mentioned that Charles Grodin seems like a discount Steve Martin... And Steve Martin was the original choice to play the dad in this film. Yes. Who they wanted. And then they got... Steve, what, after? It, it, it was Steve <laughs> Martin, also John Candy, Danny DeVito, Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, Jeff Goldblum, Rick Moranis, and then Robin Williams. This movie would have been great with all of them. Yeah. <laughs> Especially just Charles Grodin, because, I mean, it got Charles sequels. Charles Grodin was great. Yeah. I, I mean, thought he was... movie made bank. I thought he was a good, like, grumpy dad, goof character. I thought he did a very good job. I will say, in retrospect... I didn't think I really liked this movie. No? No. I mean, for the first 30 minutes, I thought I did like the film. And, <laughs> and then I found out what the villain's plot was, and then the movie just tanked for me. You know, I think yes. I kind of went through a brand. I, I was really enjoying this film. And then, yeah, then they're like, we need you to test this gun on the dog and the chemical yeah. testing. And I was like, I don't remember any of this, and this is awful. The, the, the other thing that I was going to say is that as... Uh, <laughs> this is opposite to Rookie of the Year. I felt the movie was too short. They tried oh, to. Oh, I thought it was just fine. <laughs> I did not expect you to say that. No, it. Listen, I. I, I feel like could have been you cut. want more crash zooms on Beethoven's <laughs> face. 
Well, I feel like they were kind of exploring too many things and didn't have okay. enough time to get their point across. I totally agree with you in, in that, like, it definitely felt like this moved fast. There's a montage where Beethoven grows up, and then they knock out, like, him solving problems to those kids, like, one, two, three, rapid Done, fire. Right like, there. in one day, like, yeah. he solves all three problems. And that was weird. Yes. And I did feel like that was kind of ru- The middle of this movie does feel very rushed. It, the whole thing felt very <clears> rushed <throat> to me. Hmm. But, so overall, would you watch it again? No, 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 never. Not with I, that animatronic dog face thing. That I was, so I was scary. I'd, I'd probably watch it with my kid if I oh have a kid. No, <laughs> I'd watch why? it with a kid, and I, I could probably watch but that. Would be a the couple only years, time. But uh, kind of like Rookie of the Year, I can. I don't want to watch this again anytime soon. But it's not on a scale of like Rookie of the Year to Blank Check. It's much closer to Rookie of the Year, or I could watch this again. Blank Check, I will never watch again. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it. this every time because I can't reiterate how bad that movie was. I gotta say, if we hadn't been doing this podcast, I probably would have never seen this movie again in my <laughs> yeah. entire life. I, pr- I think we're probably, we're probably gonna I unwatch. feel like, yeah, that's probably Although, true. I, I don't know. I remember I owned this on VHS for sure as a kid, and I watched it a lot on VHS. And I think I still have it's probably still at my parents' house in like a box downstairs. And I bet if I'd found it, I'd have been like, well, let's watch this again. Yeah. So, oh, who knows? Boy. But overall, yeah, I don't need to revisit Beethoven anytime soon. I might need to watch Beethoven second. The plot that we came up in the first part of our podcast where there's like an intelligence serum or some reason that they <laughs> yeah, need to get right. Beethoven, like specifically, yep. is such a better plot than... That's kind of true. Exactly. I totally agree, actually. It makes more sense than what they were trying to yeah. do. We need a big dog. We're putting too much dog. logic into it. <laughs> and it's just, oh, I gotta shoot a dog in the head. <laughs> there's a reason John Hughes did not put his name on this yes. movie. Right. So uh, join us uh, next week when we're going to talk about uh, Temple of Doom. So that'll be that'll be fun. Very exciting. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited about that. Out of the 90s. <laughs> Out of the 90s. <laughs> Into the 80s. Here we go. <laughs> Please rate, like, and subscribe to us on iTunes. Find us on Twitter at What We Remember, Instagram at What We Remember, and WhatWeRemember.com. If you're from the Metro Detroit area and you would like to book us for a live podcast and a movie event, contact us at WhatWeRememberEmail at gmail.com. And look at our website, whatweremember.com, for more details.